G'day folks, well, welcome back. So in this video, I'm out at the Horsby River and the aim is for an overnight camp on the boat. Now, um, we're in mid-May uh, May at the moment and it's just at the start of the hair tail season. So if you're wondering what the hair tail is, it's a type of ribbon fish and they're quite good eating. And every year in Australia, um, from uh, mid-April to late August, they come into the Hawkesbury River system and um, they can be quite elusive. But um, over the last few weeks, the fishing reports have been quite hot. Uh, people have been getting pretty good catches. So I'm here to see if I can join the bandwagon. And um, as for now, there's still quite a few hours until it's time to fish because um, they are nocturnal. So as soon as it gets dark, that's when they're really active. I'm going to head off to a Jerusalem Bay and I'm just going to gather a few ingredients um, for our catch and cook tonight. So I won't reveal what it is until I've actually got all the ingredients. Um, so stay tuned for that and we will check back in when we're at the spot. Okay, so we're at Jerusalem Bay now and uh, just going to come in here, forage from some oysters, and maybe some mud whelks as well for our um, recipe tonight. Now the tide is dropping at the moment. It's another hour until it's complete high tide. Um, I'm just going to find the edge of where the estuary is because I don't want to be stuck here on the low tide. Okay, so as Malcolm Douglas would say, it's um, we're in way to wild country, and it's time for a cup of tea. So if I was doing catch and cook stingray, this guy would definitely be on the menu. Uh, it's a perfect size for a meal for myself, but um, today it's his lucky day. <laughs> Things I do for YouTube. So as you can see folks, I'm dedicated to the cause. Hi hey guys. So, um, I the show in early, the early video with the wild oysters. This is what I'm looking for, and uh, I think one clump like this should be enough for what I need for the recipe. And then uh, start heading back. Maybe this one. Okay, that should do us. Let's head back to the boat before my dog gets a bit anxious. Okay, so my foraging agenda didn't go quite to plan. Just due to the fact that, um, I mean, low tide was expected to be at about a quarter to 11 a.m. However, it didn't drop to as low as it should have. Um, well, to as low as I was anticipated. As you saw in the earlier footage, um, <laughs> The water was still like knee deep so i still managed to get some oysters i had to brave the rain and pretty much wade all the way through to the foraging grounds um i was hoping to get bundi in into the, the action but um once she jumped in the water she freaked out so uh, back on the boat she went so as for now uh just before it gets dark still got a couple of hours left until uh, it gets dark i'm gonna go to the hair tail spot so i'm um, gonna head off to um, waratah bay and um We'll grab a spot quickly before um, night sets in and um, all the other boats come in. Fish on. Don't know what it is. Oh. Lift and wind. Hopefully, it's 
Not my. Ooh, hello. Ah, oh, little baby Chewy. Okay. You can go back. <laughs> Certainly not what I want. Uh, oh well, it is, but you're not the right size. Okay guys, so I'm going to just check in one last time tonight. Um, I think I'm going to call it a night because I am knackered. Um, been up since 3 this morning packing the boat, getting it ready to go. And I've got two lines out there. So while I'm asleep, if I happen to hear the real scream, then um, we've got fish on. But otherwise, um, if not, see you in the morning guys. Got a fish on. I think it's a hair towel. It's running flat. Oh no. Oh, I don't know what it is. Might be a dewy. Bam! I'm very under equipped for a dewy. Please don't bust me off. Yeah, Joey. There you are. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, baby! <laughs> oh, let's give you a major. I think I'm happy now. Well, not the target species, but... Uh. Oh, buddy. I think you're a keeper. You should be on legal. And... Uh, you are my bag limit, unfortunately. I'm not allowed to take one. Let's give you a measure. You hit 70, you're a keeper. Where does 70 go? Uh, <laughs> yep. Yes. A 70 centimeter Dewey. And that's our catch and cook. So um, we'll check back in in the morning guys and um, I've definitely got this recipe happening. Good morning guys. <laughs> what a glorious morning it is. This is what I have to wake up to. Uh, it's been pitter pattering for the last few hours and uh, as you can see certainly not catch and cook weather here but anyway um so with the ingredients i have i think i'm going to make a dash home um because i just spoke to a good mate of mine here uh, over the phone he said uh, the weather's going to pick up so i don't, I don't want to really be driving the boat home in the rain and uh, i guess i'll uh, see you back in the kitchen messiest part of the preparation out of the way there's only a couple steps left until I'm catching cool so I also didn't mention what I was going to be making today today I'm going to be making um, a seafood chowder it's going to be my take of the chowder now decided to come back home just purely the fact that um, all the odds stacked against me um, to cook on the boat as you can see when we were about the boat ramp the weather really picked up the wind was blowing a gale and I also forgot to bring a couple of items as well Firstly, my oyster knife, which I needed to shack the oysters with, 
and this I could have done without but um, I wanted to add some bacon into this chowder because it gives it a lovely flavour so this is the last of my um, home cured bacon and I'll just let you give you a rundown on the rest of the ingredients so these are as I pack them this is this some cheddar cheese that was still in the bag that I was meant for the trip I brought a couple of spuds, uh, one onion this is uh, some thick cream and some parsley at the end for a garnish and the other two ingredients obviously are our fried oysters I'm going to be preparing those and um, this lovely jewfish that fell to my line last night so uh, without further ado I'm going to finish the preparation and we'll start cooking okay so with all the prep work done it's time to cook so off camera I quickly processed all the ingredients which is give you a close up on those so that's the fish fillets there that's the bacon, some chopped onion, chopped uh, parsley, and these are the oysters that I shut before being prepped. And uh, also, I boiled up some potatoes as well, just to uh, save a bit of time. So let's start cooking. So I've got this um, pot heating up at the moment. So what I'll do is just add a bit of oil and dip into it. And in, into the oil, we'll put in the bacon with the onions as well. And we'll let the onions and bacon brown up a little bit just to release the fats and caramelize a little bit. Okay, now the bacon's um, crisping up. What we'll I'll do next is I'll add the thick cream in. We'll let that simmer for a bit. Just stir it out a bit. Right about now, I'll add the cooked potatoes as well because they were only just cooked and I want them to cook a little bit more and warm through as well. I didn't discard the uh, liquid that the potato was boiled in because I'm just going to add probably about two ladles of that to the cream. Just that, that might be a little bit thick later, so that's just to dilute it a little bit. Stir that through. Pop the lid back on. If we to start boiling, we'll add in the cheese. Stir that through, let all that cheese work in and melt. Mm, the combination of smells that's coming off it. the cheese, the smell from the cheese, the smokiness from the meat, and plus the fermented cured meat smell as well. The other onions started to come through as well. Mm. This is like an awesome combination. I've done this a few times before and um, with various different seafoods, but um, there's no saying what, in, what seafoods to use. Um, all seafood is basically good. It's just that they have different cooking times. If you, you do use like squid, octopus, um, they probably take a little bit longer to cook as opposed to fish. Because um, particularly um, the seafood that you use, freshness is the key. Like this fish and these oysters were just literally caught like hours ago. So um, it doesn't get any fresher than that. And I know Jewfish, it's going to be sensational. So once it's at a solid boil like that, I can add the fish in. Now this fish, we want it to just be cooked because it's so fresh. And Jewfish, it is um, quite a soft uh, flesh fish, so it can break apart. So that's hence why we don't want to cook it for too, too long. And with the oysters, I was going to add them at the end, but I'll add them now because they, they won't shrink too much along with their juices as well. It's just so that flavours can mingle. Oh yeah, that's looking sensational. It's looking quite ready. So I'll just add the chopped parsley in it right at the end. And we'll stir that through just to give it a bit of colour and also flavour. And that is looking amazing.
So there you have it. Seafood chowder with fresh stew fish and shucked oysters. Now let's see what it tastes like. I just get a mouthful with um, pretty much a bit of everything. But it's got to be very hot though. Some bacon on there as well. So you can see, as I mentioned, um, the dewfish is very soft, it's crumbly, it's falling apart already, but um, it's a lovely sweet meat. We'll go through the chowder as well. Mm. Oh, that sensation. Down to the fact that the green is great and the dish is great. <laughs> it's just that I haven't eaten anything since um, I had those steak and eggs on the boat. I'll go with it, it's sensational. Mm. Now I know all you cooks out there are saying this is not how you make chowder, but like I said, this is my take of um, the seafood chowder. I've done it on many occasions, and it's worked out like magically for me. So um, I highly recommend you give this a, this a try, um, whether you go buy the ingredients or go catch it yourself. But um, so as for the last 24 hours, it was quite epic being um, on a boat with my dog uh, for the first time. We did an overnight camp trip, and. Um, as you can see, the weather and a lot of the yards were stacked against me uh, for a catch and cook. But nonetheless, we pulled through with this um, dewfish that came out of nowhere and presented itself to the dinner table. But um, as for Bundy, uh, she did really well on the boat. Um, yeah, being on the boat for me, I think it was over 24 hours. And uh, I'm looking forward to many, many more adventures with my dog. Um, you would probably see in the early video where I took the camping to Lake Lyle. So, um, in the not too distant future, hopefully there'll be a few more trips coming up. So stay tuned for those videos guys. And um, once again, um, if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button right now. If you like these sort of videos and uh, you want to see more of them. And uh, as for now guys, I'm going to sit back and enjoy this hard earned um, brunch. And then I'll probably go to sleep after this. But until the next video, bye for now.